Envision a maritime war situation where Navy surface ships simultaneously face a multi-pronged attack. Possibly a sea skimming cruise missile, an anti-ship cruise missile is on the way toward a destroyer or a carrier strike group. In tandem with a helicopter attack, some kind of aerial assault, or even ballistic missile attack. How might Navy ships, as part of their layered defense system, confront one of these scenarios? Well, first, before any threat can be intercepted, it has to be seen or detected. And this is one key reason, in response to fast emerging threats, that the Navy and Raytheon are working on a new family of radars that are already being integrated onto ships. It's called the SPY-6, and what they are is 30 times more sensitive than existing radars, so they can see objects that are half the size at twice the distance. And one of the ways this is accomplished is through digital beam forming or signal processing. A lot of the stuff is in the back end in the digital processing, so that's a huge change. So digital is a, is a big change from the analog of the old days uh, that gives you a lot of the improved uh, sensitivity, discrimination, all those kind of things. The Navy is looking to expand this family of radars across its entire fleet of surface ships. There are many variants, Spy 6 V1s going on Flight 3 destroyers. Now this one combines air and missile defense and ballistic missile defense into a single system, in part so that it can track multiple threats and hand off information. Now, digital beam forming, according to various research sources and weapons developers, is explained in terms of multiple independent radar beams where electronic pings are sent forward, bounce off an area, and deliver a return signal. That return signal can then pick up a wide sphere of areas simultaneously and potentially track multiple threats at the same time. This, of course, is all about time. Commanders then have the occasion to decide which element of the layer defense system might they need to use. For example, for a medium range threat, an SM-6 might be used. For a ballistic missile approaching, interceptor missiles like an SM-3 would probably be the best choice. And for closer in threats like small boat attack or swarming close in drones, most Navy ships are armed with something called close in weapon systems, which is a phalanx gun that's an area weapon, fires out projectiles almost in a 360 degree sphere or in a very wide area envelope to take out approaching threats. Or, in the case of a sea skimming anti ship missile, the Navy has something called Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile Block 2. And what that is, is an interceptor. It fires out of a vertical launch tube and it can track and take out even these sea skimming threats. Version 3 of Spy 6 is engineered for carriers. It's going on CBN 79 or the USS Kennedy, the second Ford carrier. And there's even a version 4 that's being backfitted onto Flight 2A existing Navy destroyers. So the concept is to network a newer, much more sensitive, much more discriminating family of radars across the entire fleet, carriers, amphibs, frigates, and of course destroyers, so that threats can be seen and taken out. A part of how this is managed is what's called scalable and open architecture, building a set of common standards and the technical infrastructure to integrate new weapons as they emerge. And they use something called radar module assemblies. And what those are is two feet by two feet by two feet, essentially building blocks that can be compiled to create a collective powerful radar system. And they tailor the amount of RMAs to the specific mission set, because a Flight 3 destroyer will have many more RMAs, as many as 37. The Flight 2As are getting 24, and the ESA radars, which are for the carriers and the frigates and some other ships like amphibs, they are getting a lower amount, tailored to their mission. They don't necessarily need ballistic missile defense in the same way, but they might need layered area defense, particularly in a strategic environment described often by the Navy as distributed maritime operations, where longer range networking and sensors enable a more distributed attack, which makes it less condensed, therefore less vulnerable to enemy fire and also potentially more lethal as it can attack from longer ranges, find weaker points in enemy defenses to coordinate attack and work in tandem with unmanned boats, which massively expands endurance and range for surface ship attack. This also hinges on a much discussed military grade GAN or gallium nitrite. It's a material that's much more efficient and enables the radar to be extremely sensitive and discriminating, much more than gallium arsenide, which is used in the existing radar. 
In order to meet the much different threat environment, whether it's an attacking drone, helicopter, sea skimming missile, or even ballistic missile, multi-pronged digital beam forming radars at different bands are needed. So the faster a commander can see something, the more a counterattack is possible. Chris Osborne, Warrior Maiden.